Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Let me introduce myself. I have uh, 10 plus years of experience in Salesforce and ecosystem. Uh, precisely from CPQ, uh, I am in this uh, uh, area from last six and a half years in CPQ. Started with uh, after CPQ, uh, but now you, you guys may aware of it, the market trend is changing. More and more uh, uh, clients are coming to Salesforce CPQ because of multiple reasons. We will talk about it. So from the Salesforce CPQ, I am uh, basically in this around uh, uh, four years. Uh, actually, before Salesforce CPQ, it was a steel brick, right? So I started with steel brick actually. Uh, then Salesforce acquired and make it Salesforce uh, CPQ. Uh, then currently I'm playing a role of a solution architect where my primary role is uh, to do the whole transformation of lead to CAS uh, in terms of designing the system, how Salesforce marketing sales, all clouds are talking to CPQ. CPQ is going to talk to all the different downstream systems, the ERP system, invoicing system, taxes system. There are different things are there we'll, which we will, you know, uh, just for a uh, understanding purpose, we will anyways, we will go and cover it during the training part. Uh, that's a pretty much small intro about me. Uh, I do not want to take too much time in the introduction part. Let's start with the uh, demo part. So from the demo standpoint, uh, uh, basically uh, what we are going to you know cover is the first we will go and talk about little bit about the CPQ tool uh, as a technology right and we will not go deep into it definitely during the training we will more talk about their architectural and all those things today just we'll talk about some history background and then as a career perspective because we all now going to learn a new technology so as a as a, a practitioner or uh, how i am going to see myself uh, in next two three years in this uh, in this technology current seeing the current market trend right so we i will just focus five ten minutes there uh, just to understand also uh, if let's say i'm playing a different role as a um, as a developer as an administrator as a solution architect how i will fit it in this particular technology right uh, that is very important because uh, you, if, if if technology is not growing there there is no point of investing your time and trying to build your career so that's the first uh, five ten minutes we'll talk about it and then the next uh, uh, things which we will go and you know the talk about is uh, what we are going to cover in the training okay uh, how we are going to deliver the training and most importantly, what you will get out of it uh, from this particular training, because there are already lot of contents there in uh, basically on the internet. So the question is, what I will get specific, or how I will be benefited from this point uh, using this training? Uh, that's the uh, third thing we'll try to cover. And then the fourth, we'll talk about how it will help in certification, how it will help in if you are looking for some interview or some changes, or how it will help you in terms of project deliverables. So we'll talk about all three points because as a practitioner, uh, of course, these three things matters to me. One is first, of course, um, the interview, if I'm looking for a change because first I need a job. Second, uh, definitely at the project standpoint, uh, how I'm once I'm in a project how basically it will help to deliver the project and then of course the last the certification and the last we will go and talk about is uh, the duration the course duration how how much time it will take and all those stuffs okay uh, that's the agenda for today uh, next uh, uh, it will take uh, 30 to 40 minutes to talk about or touch all those topics and uh, then I will open it for Q&A. If uh, still you have any query in your mind, uh, we can start taking question one by one. So first of all, uh, uh, what is Salesforce CPQ, right? Um, 
we all know um, that uh, uh, we um, Salesforce nowadays is growing like anything. You name any particular uh, segment, and you will see the Salesforce is already there in it. For an example, I if I will say commerce cloud, so e-commerce website now Salesforce has, marketing cloud, finance cloud, health cloud. You name any sector, and you will find Salesforce footprint there. So how Salesforce are doing like that? I mean, did Salesforce, uh, you know, hired in number of product team and they are building each and everything and, you know, coming with a very rapid step? Answer is no, right? Because for a developing a product, you just not need a developer. Before that, you need a very mindful set of understanding the business and then um, articulate those common business requirements into a uh, into a you know product but seeing the change in the market trend and being the number one what Salesforce adopted a, a, a strategy that uh, they now they are going and acquiring different companies for an example as I said uh, even the Salesforce CPQ uh, they acquired Steelbrick around four and a half years back Earlier, it the name of the company was Steelbrick. So before that, as I said, uh, when I started as a after CPQ developer, um, uh, actually a six and a half year back. So at that time, for every customer who are who were coming to Salesforce, Salesforce recommended after CPQ to them because there was a strong partner relationship between Aptos and Salesforce. But seeing the number of companies or number of the clients are coming and seeing the market value, soon Salesforce realized that, you know, it's a very, going to be a great market for them. So they tried to acquire Aptos at that time, but uh, the valuation uh, money and all didn't go through what Aptos was looking for and then deal didn't happen then then at the time uh, as i said since the salesforce did not have that do that much of the time to go and do all the r and d uh, understand the business and uh, then uh, um, um, you know uh, develop the product and then launch it to the market so rather they started looking for a company which already have a similar type of product and that was the steel brick earlier steel brick was used by very few limited client because it was a very small company actually but the good thing was it's a <laughs> on the Salesforce platform and they already at that time they made a product with a lightning enablement that's a, a one good point for Salesforce because at that time Salesforce is going through the transformation major transformation from classic to lightning so these two things uh, made it is very uh, um, easy for Salesforce to acquire a very small company with all lightning enablement uh, there in the package and they acquired Steelbrick. So that's the story uh, as, as I said a history standpoint from uh, how Salesforce CPQ comes. Now the thing is uh, uh, Salesforce CPQ also is a nothing but a managed package, right? Which you have to go and install inside a Salesforce that we will see all those things. Uh, once we'll see the training, we will start with a very fresh scratch org and there we will go and install the packages and uh, there we will talk a lot of things like in the package, right? Though it looks like it's a very simple thing that, right? okay, just go and install a package. I'm just giving you one example. But it has a lot of points in it whenever you are implementing a project. For an example, one like should you go and install in sandbox versus production? If you are installing it, uh, uh, what are the uh, do and don'ts you have to consider from the project standpoint? So we will talk all those things about it. But the point is from the structural standpoint, this is something uh, one the managed package which you go and install it. And from the pricing standpoint, yes, a uh, client has to pay separately cost model is per user per month like the Salesforce has the normal traditional model so that's uh, that's from the package standpoint now coming to the market trend as I said uh, it's very uh, if you if you see the last year Gartner reports and even the Forbes uh, 
the current valuation i'm talking about the last year market valuation of the cpq which is more than 1 billion dollar okay uh and that is the reason you know the many vendors are you know heavily investing that that's the one reason secondly now most of the no matter large scale enterprises company small scale or mid size whoever is opting for salesforce they want to move their entire ecosystem entire sales system and everything um uh in the in the salesforce itself and that is the reason they are also now trying to move to cpq now from my career perspective which i am seeing the trend now it's not just a small scale companies even the large scale enterprise level companies are also coming and started implementation some of the big companies again i don't want to take name but uh, let's say just to, for your reference a company like google they are also using salesforce cpq now right so the, you can see the scale from a very small company to company like google now they are started using salesforce cpq so from the market standpoint it is going to be you know very strong in the cpq area so seeing the trend i can at least yes i cannot predict for 5 10 years but at least 3 to 4 years we are seeing a good uh, uh, basically increase in the demand now as a developer uh, what are what are my chances in this career so for a, again for to become a salesforce cpq developer uh, you do not have to put much more you know emphasis over it if you know the salesforce development apex trigger uh, batch class scheduler class all those stuffs then you are good to go as a cpq developer too here we will talk all those things during the training much more detail why i am talking like that now coming to as a administrator because uh, what what i will play a role as a administrator so 80% or i will say 80 to 90% of the things in salesforce cpq which we will see even in the training all are configuration okay um, the 10 to 20 15% requires customization that too also i can achieve it through uh, my salesforce development knowledge and there is some custom scripts apis are available that we will also go and talk about as a developer but for me as an administrator still i can run and for a small scale and mid size companies right if you see the requirements you can easily achieve through out of the box tools using configuration only you don't need to customize even but for the large scale enterprises they have a complex business scenarios for them you might need a in data you know customize some top of it using custom scripts that are there as a part of cpq so we will see that now as a solution architect also as i said which right now i am also playing a role where you have a very bigger role basically now because cpq will talk to your you know all the downstream systems and then cpq also going to deal with all the sales team teams which are the front end for them so you have to design the things in a way that cpq can interact with let's say the marketing cloud sales cloud and then in the downstream system um let's say i have let's say netsuite as a erp then jora as a billing i'm just pulling out some names common names which are basically right now trending in the market so we will go and talk about all those stuffs in a 360 degree view right uh, what is lead to cash process what is code to cash process and where this cpq fits in right we'll all talk about during the training part because it requires some time but just to throw an idea that no matter in which role you are in or someone you can be a role of normal as a consultant right as a ba role there also uh, it this training will help you because we will go and only most of the time we will go and talk about the project scenarios and then we will see how we are going to implement that okay so that's a very high level on the cpq what is cpq just a history standpoint i told i just covered the market uh, trend right now and being a different role uh, where i will fit myself in this technology now to talk about more about the cpq uh, definitely from the technical standpoint the uh, 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 the data schema and all and all that will go and talk during our training session uh, now 
this is uh, just uh, to highlight right uh, what whenever we are saying the cpq the cpq will made up of three word which is configure pricing and coding so that three major things uh, which derive this word cpq but that is does it cover the whole sales cycle at least till order standpoint only the cpq will not right so configure which means uh, whenever sales rep is going and for, uh, i'm giving one very simple example let's say you are planning for a trip right and uh, uh, you call let's say make my trip yatra or thomas cook there are different vendors are there and you just give the requirement like i want to spend let's say in bali three nights four days i want to make a trip this is a simple requirement you will give it to their sales reps their sales rep will come up with a different varieties of options for an example they can come and say that okay uh, do you need let's say five star hotel you need business class or you need luxury car something like that all those things will happen right and all those gap capability which is going to give you this cpq2 and based on your preferences they will generate a code and give it to you right and then they will then you will go okay which option you will want to go so all those things will comes under the cpq which is configure pricing coding then generate the code send it to the customer when customer approves it then finally it will go to an order so the purpose of this uh, slide in this uh, uh, demo session is just to throw that idea that CPQ also deals with uh, negotiation, uh, document generation, approval process will happen and finally the code generation will happen. So it's all around the CPQ which we will go and cover even in the training part uh, around it. Okay. Now that's the important slide which is we all gathered today over here is uh, uh, key features of the training so right now just one phase is over where we covered all those things now here first of all a uh, very important thing right uh, because the content wise or theory wise you will always see that there are multiple trailheads are there okay so then why you need a trainer and why you need a training in that case the very simple answer is in the trailheads all you will see the theoretical they have one scenario maybe or they will just you know in the trailhead they will say okay go and complete this challenge and it is pretty much scripted you have to go and certain follow the certain step and you will end it up doing that but does it help me in in the project delivery does it help me in clear my certification I will not rule out that it will not, but it certain sense or is a very small area. And that is where exactly the trainers comes into the picture where they will share you. And since I'm a working professional too, so I have done a lot of projects where I can share my the exact uh, experience in the project. What's do and don'ts, for example, what are the best practices, okay? what are the things you should follow as a uh, as a practice as a developer um, whenever you are in a project like as i said earlier right even the installation part looks like a very simple for everyone and you can easily skip that but that installation thing can jeopardize the entire project and it happened with me that was the first project with me in the cpq salesforce uh, one mistake in the installation and the go live date we had to push from by two weeks. I will talk about all those things why I'm talking, but what I'm trying to put an emphasis is that project experience is pretty much required that we will go and talk. So in order to cover any training during the topic, uh, during that, uh, sorry, in order to cover any training during the, uh, um, the whole training process, we will not go and start with theoretical, okay, what is this and what is that rather we will go and talk about uh, you know some business scenarios first we'll take some business scenario as a problem statement we'll discuss what could be the probable solution and then we will try to go and configure the things directly during the training itself so we used to share the screen the way we are doing it and then uh, then we will start configuring the things in the system right uh, take, uh, in order to cover that particular topic 
and at that time we will highlight three points one is from project standpoint what is the important if anything is important from the interview standpoint and if any topic which is important for the your certification okay so that is how we are going to cover it's not going to be covered in a linear manner like okay what is product first i will go and cover each and everything from product management then i will go and cover everything from price management just to cover the topic uh, that we will not do and every time we will come up with some business problem statement and every day we will share the screen right away uh, and then we'll discuss the solution and then we'll try to configure it okay so another thing and that is why it says project based training and as i assure you right we are not going to pre configure anything before the training and in the class i will come here say look this is the thing this is how i configured just look into it you go and practice that out no every thing even a small to big thing we will go and configure right away in the system during that particular training session or tra on that particular day and we'll try to see the output okay so and when we are seeing the output most importantly during the pricing part we have to understand the various parts why this net price and how this net price is derived right because there you will see lot of uh, uh your examination questions where you will see the scenarios and then in the multi choice answers they will ask you what will be the final net price so there we have to understand very carefully all the calculations and also we will discuss all those things okay and that is covers your you know the first three uh, first two points where a uh, project based trainings and live uh, demonstration of the features and practical so nothing is theory basically now coming to you what you will get for the practice so one thing uh, uh we will give you one um, a project uh, which will basically that you will go and cover that and why it's called as a uh, um, um, industry based project is because the project you will get you will not get a uh, uh, like if you are seeing a trailer right okay go and click create a product go and create a field it's nothing like that rather you will get all the business scenarios in the project okay whatever we covered uh, we will give it to start uh, you know give you a project and then keep adding the scenarios in that project in order to cover the 360 degree view that project i will give it to you whatever the topics i covered and you guys go and try to implement the things or your the learning but if you face any challenge definitely we will go and discuss that out but my intention would be again not to solutionize that because i want you guys to try to put your brain whatever we understood or whatever we learned that will help you and if you facing challenge there definitely i will be there to solve that okay so that's the first difference rather saying that okay go and click this button create a product go and click because if you are following that type of project right you will feel happy that okay now i am able to do it but actually you are not because you are just following your some instruction not applying your brain right so that is the one another different area which basically we are following the different approach other than practical thing the project you will get all the business scenarios you will get okay other than that you will also see random quiz session um, uh which will be basically if i will cover some topics uh, accordingly i i will flash it uh, uh, you know random some questions which multiple choice answers just to uh, refresh the things that we covered and you will also able to recall the things okay uh, other than that there are some specialized topics where basically which are very uh, uh, important for uh, project implementation or for a examination standpoint or for an interview standpoint so there are separate hands on exercises also you will get apart from the project that will particularly for some of the topics which are very important in terms of understanding for an example as i said pricing there are lot of things in the pricing and you will get lot of multiple scenarios there uh, 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 to find what will be the output or what will be the final total card value and all and all so those types of 
topics we will touch and uh, definitely uh, in the project already those topics will be there in the terms of scenario but apart from that to put more emphasis uh, we will give you the hands-on exercises other than that uh, if you see the important trailhead links I made it because nowadays if you just type something you will get n number of trailhead links also so seeing the time constraint right you may end it up you know just duplicating or doing the same trailhead again and again rather than covering the entire 360 degree so there uh, will give you the important trailhead link to uh, that's again the additional practice apart from your a project apart from your hands-on exercise apart from your daily quizzes um, this is another thing that if you really want to do more practice you can go and follow with those links and just try to complete that uh, yes in all those say, four things right you may end it up multiple doubts and all so again we are not doing like that okay uh, at the weekend or at the you know uh, uh, some separate sessions we are going to have your doubt clearance no my my way to doing it if you have any uh, query or any uh, thing that stuck in your mind will definitely first clear that out otherwise it may happen the consecutive topic that we are going to cover during the training it might feel not relevant to you because your question your mind is still stuck with the previous question so for the doubt clearing session the approach is whenever I am done with it any topic uh, if you have any question even though you, uh, my way to do it I always keep asking that is it clear is it clear is it clear if you have the question then and there let's put it on and uh, clear your doubt it's no matter if later point of time if you have any question uh, during the start of let's say I have covered today something tomorrow before starting the session you can come up with your questions right that okay these are the things uh, uh, that are uh, that I have in my mind and I'm stuck with that we'll try to you know solutionize that we'll try to answer those things so that will help uh, you know to stuck the questions or the uh, the doubt which you have in your mind uh, apart from that what else you will get of course you will get a recorded session um, uh, so that uh, uh, you will go through it once the training is over and at least before going to the project before going to the hands-on exercise I will say that at least repeat the things that we will cover it in the training at least try to make that thing in your org first so that it will give you a one level comfortability right then go to these hands-on and project thing where you have the business scenario then you can apply your thought in it okay so that these many things uh, we will uh, basically um, go and help you out apart from that last which is very important uh, from the interview standpoint and the examination question so we will provide you around uh, I will say 120 or 130 around questions uh, which are basically maybe asked in some of the interviews or which are basically asked in some previous uh, Salesforce CPQ certification exam now don't consider this is the final dump because as I said the versions are keep changing but it will give you a very good idea like what are the topics basically uh, being asked in the exam or in the interview and what are the things uh, uh, basically how I am going to practice that out the questions I one thing I can guarantee you the examinations question will come around those uh, 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 pattern and those areas only it might be the things uh, the situation might be they will change that okay so these many things uh, that will be basically uh, you are going to get it and this is the areas where we are going to help you guys okay in the training part so most importantly concluding statement is like you will get the real-time experiences versus the theoretical which you are seeing in the trailhead now moving on uh, from the training or um, you some of you are aware or some of you are not but uh, just to um, cover it, it during the demo that uh, um, uh, that uh, um, you will get a training org uh, this is free of cost by the way available 
and uh, you will get a 90 days trial version uh, from Salesforce. After 90 days, your package is going to expire. The only thing is, let's say after that also you want to practice or you want to know, I still want to learn few more things. The only way that you can go and create a new fresh developer org, uh, Salesforce, which is again free of cost, and there we, you have to go and install the package once more. Okay, because based on the org ID, right, Salesforce will not allow you to activate more than 90 days. If you are going with that, then you have to basically go and sign SOW and pay some price to it to change the from trial version to full version. But in a project, definitely you will get a full version which has a uh, basically uh, availability as per the SOW signed by your client with Salesforce. Uh, but as a training, uh, definitely as I said, we'll start with a very scratch. Uh, we will create a fresh developer org. There we will go and install this package and we will talk all do and don'ts, all those things that we will definitely go and talk about it. Now, this is another important thing, okay, what I'm going to cover in the training, right? Because right now, till here, we talked about, okay, how we are going to cover the training, what you will get, uh, how you will get benefited and all and all. Now, this is related to what topics we are going to cover. So, these topics, uh, you see, one thing I, I tried is to make very uh, short and crispy. I do not go and start putting subtopic within that just to make the lengthier list, right? Uh, it will again unnecessary. You guys also confuse. So the idea is to put a high level uh, the the topics name at the header level. There are subtopics. So basically, each topic itself contains multiple small topics. That anyways we will go and touch that out. In this topic, there are three things we uh, put our thought. One is again. From the certification standpoint, do I cover all the topics? Second, from the interview standpoint, do I have all the topics? Or from the project implementation, do I have all the topics? So considering all those things, uh, this design, this is very, uh, I will say, customized topics which we are seeing over here, where you will see all the things which are related to these three areas. Okay. So for an example, the first two, which I will say, uh, uh, or Salesforce CPQ overview, maybe uh, you will not see any question in the exam. But somebody can ask you during the interview and uh, that what is, uh, tell me something about the CPQ, just to know that what, how comfortable you are in terms of understanding the CPQ as a tool. Again, I will not go each and every topic, but just to highlight, right, the installation and configuration. This is maybe not important for from your interview standpoint, again, from the examination standpoint, but very important from the project standpoint. There are multiple things here, do and do, how you are going to install the package, how you are going to upgrade the package, how you are going to do the patch installation. There are multiple areas that we have to talk. And we, we you will see the one day session will only go in this thing only, installation and all. Likewise, just to quickly cover, um, uh, if you see from here, like product setup, bundles, rules, configurations, attribute, custom action, this is one customization, guided selling, all comes under your product management. Then you have price waterfall, or discounting schedule, pricing method, this is POT, percent of total, um, MDQ, multidimensional code, contract pricing, Till here, pricing rules, and then the lookup object, how you are going to use it in the pricing rules. This all comes under your pricing management. Now, as I said earlier, we will not go and follow the linear methodology where I will only first talk about the product, then I will go and talk about the pricing. That is not how it will happen in all the three areas, right? When, when an interviewer is giving you some scenario, it will be a combination of all different things of the all CPQ product and pricing most of the time. Similarly, the questions you will get in your exam, that is also the scenario based, 80 to 90% questions will be scenario based in the exam, which will comprises of all the learnings that you have. So that is how we will also follow the same. But yes, we will make sure all the things that we are seeing here in the PPT will try to cover uh, by taking some uh, use cases and business scenarios. So these two topics are uh, related to code document, which you can, again, uh, using the CPQ tool itself, you can generate the document and give it to the client. 
though this is a very basic uh, thing Salesforce has given lot more capabilities are not there if your client is looking for much more higher version or look and feel and all and all there are multiple tools like conga and there are other tools which will help you to generate the document but CPQ also has the capability because many clients does not have extra money to go and give it they want a very basic template so as a practitioner I should know then uh, this is entire your whole CPQ um, uh, uh, your cycle or the coating cycle like add-on renewal cancellation partial cancellation these are very important again from the uh, um, uh, examination standpoint you will not see much questions in this flow but for a project and for an interview these are very important to understand the business context how we are going to do new business in CPQ how you are going to do renewal in CPQ how you are doing going to do add-on cancellations partial cancellations these are the things that we will go and try to implement directly in the system because that is the area where sales teams, renewal team, this is the end user, the output. Till here, whatever you have configured, here you are going to see the output, right? So we will, uh, you know, go and, uh, uh, you know, talk about all those things. Uh, then the last slide, which is very important, uh, which you will see definitely approval is also not the part of CPQ package, but 80 to 90 percent of the projects they are using advanced approvals which we will go and you know cover it as a part of training but the important thing which I want to highlight uh, there as a trainer and uh, I will help you in uh, best practices for project implementation performance troubleshooting data schema migration scenarios uh, because these are very important from the project standpoint right and then customization best practices these slide which you are seeing that is the one area I will say it will make a different from other uh, theoretical learning that you will not get anywhere on the blog or maybe anywhere in the internet at right? some things you will get it but not into it I cannot claim that you will not get anything might be you will get something uh, but why I need these things definitely right uh, once you configure something in developer or right now you want to migrate to higher or so you need to understand the migration scenario you need to understand the data schema this again uh, from examination standpoint might not be important but for project yes so as I said these topics which I put it here in the slide which are mostly considering all three things in the mind so that you will be come out as a you know as a 360 degree I will say uh, you know at least each on everything you have the recorded session you can listen it at any point of time of course at the end practice is required uh, I cannot claim that okay after 30 days of the training you will become you know uh, the you will come out of the architect of course not but at the same time of course you will feel comfortable on these areas right and then the you will do more practice on top of it you will feel more at much and much more comfortable but at least you will have these things in your notes okay while implementing the project these things I should not do because of this this thing can happen and all I am talking again whatever I faced in this last six and a half years in different projects comprising all those things will try to cover and put it here and again this is not going to be a separate session for this what whatever the topic we are going to cover okay uh, there only we will talk about all those things so that you can relate it because just one session doesn't make any sense right uh, I will come and talk about okay do this do don't, don't all those things rather for an example if you are talking about product configuration we will go and talk about all the best practices related to product configuration what is the problem of uh, uh, troubleshooting and what is the data schema related to product configuration all those things related to that so that you can relate it into it okay uh, this is the last slide guys and I think after that uh, uh, I will open it for Q&A this is just to show you uh, that what and how we are going to focus our entire training if you see the first two topics are going to be major one which are which are product bundles and the pricing discounting uh, these are product management and the pricing and this is important the same way you are seeing even in the project even in the interview even in the e examination uh, the, uh, these two topics products and pricing is going to basically going to be big 
where you will get multiple scenarios and even in the project multiple uh, many times are basically you will end it up touching these two areas uh, and this the division you are saying this is from the salesforce uh, um, uh, admin or salesforce examination standpoint uh, but this is stands true for all the areas that is why i put it this slide um, now with that i am winding it up thanks for watching the video for full course please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today